It's 4.30 and this is WKYT This Morning. Two deadly crashes a few hours apart on Central Kentucky roadways. Police don't know if the weather played a factor in the crashes. They're not ruling that out though just yet. All of the rain turned a regular trip into a cave into a terrifying scene in Western Kentucky. Nearly two dozen college students were trapped. We'll find out how they escaped. And we're learning more details about a double shooting in Laurel County. What happened during that shooting and situation just ahead. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and we're so glad to have you with us on WKYT on this Friday that leads right into the Memorial Day weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Finally, it's Friday. Right. You know, <laughs> you just think, Monday, ah, I can't wait for Friday to be here, and yeah, it's here. You got it. And a little time off, uh, hopefully, uh, for some folks to enjoy. And the weather looks to cooperate uh, somewhat nicely. We've had some uh, storms moving in uh, here and there. And, Micah, is that uh, it's sort of going to continue, huh? Yeah, that's what it looks like. That pattern continues all the way into next week, but it's still here. Hit and miss. Not everybody will see the rain today nor the weekend, but they're still there. It's just one of those times you just got to watch where they pop up. Defender Radar Network, there's the look. We're looking good this morning. 60s outside. Actually, it feels quite nice. But when it feels really nice in the morning, it doesn't feel so nice during the afternoons. 86 degrees, that small chance of rain is with us today. The weekend forecast is what you really want to know about, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Now the news, two people died in crashes about an hour apart on central Kentucky roadways. The first happened on U.S. 27 in Nicholasville when two cars hit head-on in front of Bethel Harvest Church. The crash killed one person and sent another to the hospital. WKYT's Monique Blair is tracking the investigation. All we know right now is there was a silver passenger car that was southbound on 27 and crossed into the northbound lanes. We don't know why um, the driver of the silver vehicle was killed, pronounced dead on scene. The driver of the silver car has been identified as 30-year-old Jeremy Hampton, who the Jessamine County Coroner's Office says lived in Nicholasville with his fiance. There was nobody else inside the car with him. Nicholasville police say the driver and only person inside the SUV was conscious at the time she was taken to the hospital. An accident reconstruction team spent close to four hours at the scene Thursday night collecting information in an effort to figure out why Hampton's car went into oncoming traffic. It was raining at the time of the collision, but we don't know that the accident reconstruction unit will pull the computers from the vehicles and it'll determine speed and that kind of stuff and if there was any braking, but you know, they've looked for evidence of hydroplaning and didn't find it on the initial inspection, but their investigation is far from complete. After this accident happened around 5 o'clock, traffic moving in both directions was contained to only one lane each, which caused a significant delay on U.S. 27. We know 5 o'clock traffic is bad on a, on a good day in, on Nicholasville Road, and we understand that. We know we've inconvenienced everybody by shutting this down, but if it was your loved one, you would want all the answers you could possibly get. In Jessamine County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Nicholasville Road was partially shut down for about four hours and reopened around 9 o'clock last night. Police think the rain played a role in a deadly crash about an hour later on Interstate 75. Lexington police say a car headed southbound left the road, overcorrected, and flipped near the Athens Boonesboro exit. The Fayette County coroner says 77 year old Ronald Himes died at the scene. Two women went to the hospital, one with head trauma and the other with minor injuries. And it is tragic that the that there were two fatalities um, that close together. What my recommendation would be, um, especially when it's raining this hard, to, to just be careful. Give yourself some extra time. Give yourself some extra space. The southbound lanes were closed for about two hours because of the crash. The heavy rains created a scene that sounds like it could have been part of an action movie. Nearly two dozen college students found themselves trapped in Hidden River Cave in Hart County as the waters inside were rising. They eventually made it out of the terrifying situation and everybody is safe. WKYT's Garrett Weimer tells us how they managed to escape. Tour guides say the water in this cave is normally about ankle deep. But when the rain started at 2 o'clock, they knew it wouldn't stay that way. We seen it started raining real hard. I mean, it was torrential downpour. I mean, it was real heavy rain. So we knew how quick the cable flood and how fast and everything. So we knew we had to get back there and find them and get them to come out. A group of 19 students from Clemson University and four tour guides were stuck in the cave as the water started to rise inside. I've been told that it's called the attic. Uh, it's a part of that cave where 
the ceiling is a little bit higher than the rest of it, so they were there to, to give themselves some, some room. And as that water started to rise, at some point they made the decision that uh, they needed to try to get out of there as the water was rising. That's when officials tell our sister station in Louisville, WLKY, that the group waded through neck deep water to get out. One tour guide who went in to try to help get them out says he knew they had to hurry. Yeah, when you're about 150 foot underground, you don't know what's going on the surface. So, and we knew it was about two more hours before they were scheduled to come out. So, we knew by that time it would be flooded. And we're told that everybody was out of the cave by around 4:30 local time. Two police officers were also trapped inside the cave at one point after going inside to try to help. Everyone was able to get out without getting hurt, so it ends well. But uh, what an experience, huh? Another area hard hit by all of the rain was in Wayne County. Check out the flash flooding, what it did to these cars on Highway 167 there. The emergency management director tells us the cars were parked near a large drainage ditch when rushing waters moved them. Several roads and streets flooded out. At one point, 6,000 people had no electricity. And we are understanding also that there were some reports of sinkholes from some of the flooding. And with more rain in the forecast for the holiday weekend, remember, we can help you stay ahead of it and what's going on. Just download the WKYT weather and traffic app for your iPhone or smartphone. We have new details about a double shooting in Laurel County. Landon Collins is accused of shooting Ralph Boggs and Garrett Turner at a home on Locust Grove Road. Deputies now say Boggs and Turner went to the home to confront Collins over a domestic issue with Boggs' daughter. Now, Boggs was shot in the head, Turner in the stomach. Both men were taken to UK. Deputies say Collins didn't get far before they arrived. Throw the gun out in the yard, and whenever our deputies uh, rolled up on the scene, uh, he was waiting for us at the road. Collins is charged with two counts of criminal attempt to commit murder, possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, and receiving stolen property. While at the scene, deputies say they found a car stolen from Lexington. The suspect, Richard Bowling, approached a reporter from our sister station, WYMT, at the scene, and he told him he wanted to surrender. He is charged with receiving stolen property. We have an update on one of the victims in a deadly Casey County crash. Police say 62-year-old David Bryant died after his truck hit two cars head-on on Highway 70 West. The crash also involved 19-year-old Madison Dobson, 36-year-old Jeremiah Cooper, and his wife Stephanie. A friend of Dobson says that she is improving and her injuries are not as severe as first thought. Police say Bryant was drinking before the crash. We looked at his past record and found numerous DUIs dating back to the 1990s. He had his license suspended and his license plate taken away after a DUI in October. He was also ordered to stay off of the road for two years. State police have started an investigation after a volunteer fire department's four trucks were repossessed. First Government Lease Company in Northfield, Illinois, took the trucks from the Warfield Volunteer Fire Department in Martin County earlier this week. The company claimed loans taken out on the trucks were not paid back. Department leaders and county officials are trying to figure out who applied for the loans and why, since the vehicles had already been paid for. Right now, we're going to try to seek some legal aid and see what we can do if it was done legally um, and go from there. The department still has two fire engines and a rescue truck. They're also receiving help from departments in Inez and Kermit, West Virginia. Six years after his father died in an unsolved hit and run, a man isn't giving up his search for answers. A car hit and killed Robert Luther on May 26, 2010, after his truck broke down along I-64 in Rowan County. He was traveling from Ohio to Tennessee at the time. His son, Ryan, returned to Rowan County to pass out flyers along with water, snacks, and treats. He says he wants to bring awareness to his father's unsolved death, as well as other cold cases. More University of Kentucky employees face losing their jobs. UK announced it will lay off up to 75 people as part of an administrative reorganization. The staff and administrative layoffs will make up $1 million of nearly $6 million in cuts. This comes just days after the UK College of Arts and Sciences announced it will lay off 30 employees because of a budget deficit. 
Graduation season is finally here in Fayette County, and three high schools will be having the graduations today. The Bryan Station graduated first yesterday with its ceremony at Rupp Arena. Henry Clay also graduated its seniors last night. Lafayette, Dunbar, and Tate's Creek will graduate today. And if you're headed to Rupp, remember that you will have to go through the facility's new metal detectors that were added just last month for the safety of everyone. But uh, again, best of luck to those graduates. What yes. Good luck good to you. Time, what a huh? fun time. Yes. Good to have you along this morning at 440 on WKYT. Parents, listen up. It's healthy to make room on your calendar for a date night now and then. So we have one more date you may want to make time for. We'll explain coming up. Today, with that smaller chance of rain in the forecast, we go off towards your weekend. We still got a few storms to talk about, and I'm going to show you exactly when I expect that. Coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're looking good this morning with dry conditions as you walk outside. It's actually pretty nice. It feels really good. I actually rolled down my windows as I took off to work early this morning. And, and temperatures are there in the 60s. The moisture's there. The humidity is not really there this morning, but you'll feel it later on this afternoon. Defender Radar Network with nothing on it as you step out the door early this morning. 60s out and about. We're 66 degrees right now in Richmond, mid 60s. That goes for Laurel County down south into Jackson. Over toward eastern Kentucky, and we're holding on to mid to upper 60s. Even a 70 degree reading in a couple locations. But we go through the day and watch. So you'll actually see those temperatures be right there around 86 degrees later on this afternoon. Only that small chance of rain in the forecast, but it's still very warm, very muggy. It's going to be sticky, meaning if anything pops up over your house, it's going to be very heavy downpours, like you saw yesterday for many locations. Now we get off into your weekend. And a few storms will be with us, especially Saturday. I would say Saturday is your better chance of rain than, say, Sunday. Sunday's more of your 20, 30 percent chance of rain, meaning you could have a couple of pop up thunderstorms here and there. Uh, but Saturday or Sunday is going to be the best day during the weekend for boating, uh, just because you're not going to be stuck out on the water with all these thunderstorms. Now, Saturday, there are a few thunderstorms in the forecast. They're obviously hit and miss. You're not going to get a front rolling through. It's just going to be hit and miss showers and thunderstorms. Both of those days, 84, 85, it's a pretty muggy day right there in the forecast. And then we have a little better news there on Monday. Monday, it still looks like a, a chance of rain, but it's still a small chance. And as we've said the past few days, that uh, 30 and 40 percent chances of rain across the viewing area each and every single day. Temperatures there in the 80s, too. So we're starting off today. At around 40%, a storm or two is possible, especially late in the afternoon, off into the evening hours. If you're traveling, I don't see much of an issue uh, there for travel. Uh, just maybe getting under an isolated thunderstorm, but that's about it. It's not going to be a line of thunderstorms like you saw yesterday roll on through. We hit Saturday, Sunday. Remember, Saturday is your better opportunity to see rain with all these events going on. Just know you're going to have to plan around that in some spots. And Sunday, there you go, very muggy along with Monday. Sunday and Monday are kind of the same day as you only have a small chance of rain. Most stay dry all the way throughout your work week or your weekend, rather, off in the next week. But there still is that chance mm -hmm. that you could have a passing shower or thunderstorm. And you saw it yesterday. None of these. I say none of these. Most of these, 90% of these, just heavy downpours and some lightning. And they'll pass on through. Some of these can be strong. Some of these mm -hmm. can be an isolated severe cell, especially with all the moisture laying around. Yeah. But you get the heavy downpours, and then it moves on by. So stick with your. Parents. You know what I see with this consistency, and Absolute, I never oh, see that every, here, right? I mean, at least it's consistent. Day. Yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> kind of like Florida weather right now. That's true. <laughs> very, very true. Uh, we all sound a little stuffy this know. morning, you know. And allergies just early, are in but, the air. Wow, well, and everybody you talk. To yeah. you know, says the same kind of thing right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, 446 now. We all enjoy a night out with our significant other from time to time, but have you made room in your schedule for a special outing with your child? In today's Mom's Everyday Minute, we have some mommy and me date ideas to spark both of your imaginations. Hi, today we're with Tara Verma, blogger at Yummy Sprout and Madison Mom's blog, and we're talking about mommy and me dates. With Isla. Yes, I think whether you have one child or many children, it's great to carve out time for just you and them. So, taking them on some parent and child dates. Okay. Um, and I have some fun ideas. All right. Um, coffee shop, have them pack a little bag of like 
um, their color book and crayons or yep. books. You can even work at your laptop if you have things to do. Get them some steamed milk yep. so they can have a little cup too and, and have a little coffee date. All right. Um, sushi date. Take them to a sushi restaurant. I am totally shocked and impressed that my kids like sushi and I would have never known if I didn't try it. Um, and they love to watch like the sushi chefs making it and like yeah. they have the little clips so they can try the chopsticks. Great idea. Um, so that's fun. Um, take them to a bookstore, look around, yeah. pick out books. I mean that is hours of fun right there. You can't go wrong with a book Yeah. and any time spent with the baby. Yeah. Thank you. Not sure my kids would eat sushi. That's interesting. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. You said you love days like that, right? Oh, the girls just love them, you know. We're going to go on a coffee date. Yeah, get to donut date. Yep, we do donuts, mom. not sushi. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that sound a little better, right? Yeah, At least donut. this time of morning. 4.48 our time on WKYT, and we're just getting started with the morning's news. A plan to change an old bank to a community center here in Lexington. That has some money it needs to hopefully start the project. Those details still ahead on WKYT this morning. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. It is 4:51, and there's something that's been a bit of a source of controversy. The Urban County Council will be giving more money to a group planning to move an old Lexington bank and make it a community center. Yeah, the council voted eight to four to give an additional $150,000 to Warwick Foundation. The group is working to move the People's Bank from South Broadway to a donated site on Rupp Arena's High Street parking lot. Now, the Herald Leader reports the amount of the city. The amount of the city money given to the project is now up to $300,000. During the meeting, the council also voted to increase the hotel and motel tax 2.5%. The money will help pay for a $250 million convention center expansion. The council also approved borrowing $22 million for restoration of the old courthouse. So some money discussions there at the council. Well, the Kentucky Horse Commission has chosen a new executive director. The commission met in closed session before announcing Laura Pruitt as the next executive director. The decision comes days after Governor Matt Bevan replaced a handful of board members, including former First Lady Jane Bashir. Pruitt will begin her work on July 1st. From what I've heard, I mean, I do not think there's anything improper, probably, you know, so we'll see. I think that perhaps that there's, there might be little things, policies, whatever, but I'm not concerned. I've been through audits. Um, I've conducted audits, so, you know, I understand. The contract for current executive director Jamie Link will expire June 30th. The commission decided not to renew it, but says it would not say why. <coughs> Excuse me. Service dogs are known for their dedication to humans. One group wanted to take care of them as a way to thank them for all they do. The American College of Veterinary and Ophthalmologists hosted an event to give service dogs free eye exams. Hoagie, who works with veterans suffering from PTSD, received an eye exam at the MedVet Medical and Cancer Centers for Pets in Lexington. Good service there. Well, it absolutely is. And, uh, this is something <laughs> going me. on. <laughs> like I said earlier, <laughs> I'm telling you. Something's in the air. Another trip to the water fountain for you, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, 453 right now. Coming up next, a look at some of the stories that our news team is working on for you this morning. And we'll have another look at your morning forecast. That's coming up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back in. 457 on WKYT this morning. Now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on this morning. We're learning some new information about a prostitution ring involving a former Franklin County constable. Thomas Bonta will be heading to court later this morning. At the top of the hour, we'll look at these new details from case records, including who one woman says were her clientele. We're going to be watching weather very closely throughout the weekend. A lot of folks are uh, you know, going to be out and about and yes. here and there, a little time off, and uh, we could have some storms rolling through. We could have storms, but we also have consistency for the first time in a while, right, Micah? Well, that is the truth because you're in that summertime setup where toward the afternoon you can have some of these thunderstorms pop up and roll across the viewing area. We're in the 60s this morning. No rain this morning as it looks pretty good out and about. We get into your afternoon, though. Small chance at a couple of rumbles of thunder. Temperatures in the mid. 80s. And speaking of consistency, we're going to have that for the weekend and off into Monday, too. I'm going to go over that with another two hours of WKYT News.